Good morning. Please stand by your desk in silence for our morning prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? If you are to go with your opponent before a magistrate, make an effort to settle the matter on the way. Otherwise, your opponent will turn you over to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the constable, and the constable throw you into prison. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we pray that through your mercy and generosity, we become worthy of eternal life with you. We pray for the strength to live out the gospel and praise your glory all of our days. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. St. John Bosco, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Imagine this scenario. Imagine someone has come and brought a case against you that they're basically bringing you to court. Either you uh, owe them money or you've done something wrong towards them and they're bringing you to court and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're guilty for one and then also that all the evidence stacks against you. You know you're going to lose the case. What would be the wise thing to do in that particular situation? Well, I think we'd all agree the most wise thing to do would be to try to settle out of court. Try to make things right. Try to smooth things over with the person before even going to court. That's exactly what Jesus describes in Luke chapter 12, verses 57 through 59. Now, is Jesus just trying to give us good legal advice? Or is he talking about something much deeper? I do believe he's talking about something much deeper because in the context of Luke chapter 12, He's been talking about his second coming, that he is coming again, he's coming in judgment. And so this would tie in with that, with the idea that, hey, uh, the day of judgment is coming, a day is, of reckoning is coming, and you know deep within your heart, you have done things against God. God has his standard, he has what he has laid out, the way that he would have you to live. And you've fallen short of that. You just know you've done some bad things. You're, you have a guilty conscience. You know you're in the wrong. And the other thing that you know is that uh, he has a good case against you. God has seen all the things that you've done. Uh, there's no back talking. There's no, or there's no trying to back out through talking, through smooth talking. He's seen you do it. You're, you're caught red-handed. He knows every single thing that you've done. And you know on that day when you are to be judged, you will be found guilty. There's no doubt about it. And we, this, this could apply not only to Christ's second coming, but even in our death. Uh, the Hebrew writer says, It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. And so wouldn't it make sense if you know that you've done something against God, against His will for your life, and you know that you're going to be found guilty, all the evidence stacks up against you, wouldn't you want to settle out of court? Wouldn't you want to make things right now while you're quote unquote on the way or in this life and make things right between you and God? There's really no excuse not to because everything has been supplied for us through Jesus Christ. Good morning. My name is Oscar Campioni. Please prepare for the following announcements. Okay, guys. I need your help. Really need your help. Next week, no, actually, next week, yeah, it's Halloween, right? So, we are having a special, special event here for the Trinity of the Neighborhood, where we're going to line up the whole property with little tables to give our candy to trick-or-treaters, the small kids. But we can't do this unless I have your help. Now, I know I got a lot of labor power, but I need candy. Candy, candy, candy. Look, trust me. As a fat diabetic, I know how much the value of candy is. I need you to realize how much the value of candy is. So please, donate. I need you to donate, donate. Give me money, all right? Give money for it. I'll take money, cash, all right? To bring more candy in. We need tons of it. I need Costco-sized candy. I need 
little candy, everything. Whatever you guys could bring in would be much appreciated. We need to show this neighborhood that Salesian High School can show out, and this is one of the ways we can do it. So, gentlemen, please, candy, all right? Guys, be blessed. I'm praying for you, and until next time, peace. The Salesian Spectator, Salesian School Newspaper, is looking for new writers. If you're interested in writing a feature piece, doing an interview with a teacher or members of a club, maybe even writing an opinionated editorial, contact Mr. Bruno or Senior Chief Editor Sherquan Daly at either of the emails listed here. We hope to hear from you soon. The CIA Salesian's Improv Troupe will meet in person and remote today from 3 to 4.30 outside Flaherty Hall. If you're interested in joining, please email Mr. Dwyer at kdwyer at salesianhigh.org. All are welcome to participate or watch. Hey, this is AJ on Salesian Pranks. And today, we're going to prank all the school. <laughs> all right, all right. Hello? <laughs> hey, is, is your refrigerator running? You got rid of them because of the pandemic? Oh, uh, oh, well, you better go catch it. <laughs> they hung up. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, and it's a great day to be an eagle.